Hi folks, this is Lisa, Connecticut Garden Gal. You may notice that I just changed my username to Connecticut Worms and Gardens. I am trying to get more subscribers and I think my former screen name may have um, prevented people from checking out my channel because worms weren't mentioned and it is a big part of what I do here. Anyway, we're looking right now at the top of the bin that houses my African night crawlers. The reason I'm doing this video is I was communicating with another worm breeder online, so a channel that I follow and, and enjoy very much, and he showed his African night crawlers, and they didn't look at all like what I have, and he mentioned that several other viewers commented that they didn't look like African night crawlers, but he also heard that African night crawlers can change in size and color based on their environment. That's not anything that I've heard before, and it's not anything I'm experienced with. It may be absolutely true. I haven't had African night crawlers for very long. I think the ones you're about to see are, have been here not even two months before I purchased them I did a lot of research to make sure that I knew what I was getting into and that I could provide um, the best environment I could given I am as far from their natural habitat as could be um, so you know I did a lot of reading so I don't have a lot of experience with ownership but I did a lot of reading and I watched a ton of videos and I never saw anyone else mention that they can change in their color and size based on what what their environment is. But again, it may be true. So I told the person that I would do a video showing what mine look like simply for that purpose, just to show you what they look like. So I, I was in this bin yesterday and I added a bunch of um, pumpkin to the bottom now the african night crawlers at least the ones i have are they're they're deep dwellers i the only time i seen them on the surface is the day i got them now this bin you're going to see is half empty uh, it's a very big deep bin and i was told or i read when researching them that they are very flighty and um they should be kept in a deep bin. Now, other than the day I got them, I haven't had any try to escape. But I don't regret the bin being oversized because I hope that they're going to, you know, populate enough that they're going to require this whole bin. But you'll notice that the half of the bin that they're not using, it is dry and there's not even trails of the worms they don't even move around throughout the part of the bin that is unoccupied. So not only have they not been flighty, um, they've been sticking to just their little, their little happy area here, which right now I have a light over so we can see because the lighting in this room is terrible. Um, I have an old house and the lighting is terrible everywhere. So um, they have been eating. They've been eating very well. This was a mix of coconut core and shredded cardboard and um, a little bit of scraps from outside and um, you, you can see what it's at what it is now it looks much different than it looked when I put them in here um, despite them obviously showing evidence or the bin showing evidence that they've been eating I don't see them being active and obviously they are, but again, they're, they're deep dwellers. So that's why the, um, this is pulverized or ground oyster shells. I added it to the top, but since they're not top feeders, they're not, they're not going, they're not going after it. One thing I noticed with all my worms is if I pull out a plant, could be a weed, could be a flower, and I plop it in here with the, root attached um, the worms will always get into the roots now this one 
You don't find the worms in here because the African night crawlers are too big to be in that root there. But in my other bins, every plant root I have is full of them, full of worms. So, okay, I've seen one guy there. Um, this is a very young worm. This actually is quite young. Um, you'll notice, let's see if the camera will do its job. You'll see a little bit of, mm, almost like a hologram near the front moving tip. And if I tilt the phone, yeah, you, you see that sort of holographic, reflective sort of appearance? That's not a camera fluke. That's, that's how these worms are. And although they are a little lighter on the bottom, they're not completely light like um the indian blue worms for example they're almost electric pink color on the top um i'm not sure where they got their name blue worms they're not blue but um on the bottom they're 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 very they're very different in color so that that worm there he was a young one uh, i'm going to try to find one that's a little bit bigger and hope to get a good a good image of it okay this one here is a little bigger usually if I have my fingers all the way open they will span all the way across it and let's see let me move it over here where maybe there's a little bit better of a light come on phone you didn't cost me all this money to be terrible Maybe you did. Okay, so what I've noticed with all of them is not not good with worm anatomy. The area behind their head, um, in front of and in back of the uh, clitotellum, is usually wider than their midsection. And that is true with all of them. It's not one not eating enough. They get their fat up at the front. They get skinny. And then they get fat again near their butt. <laughs> it's, it's it's true to every worm I have. They were that way when I got them. And as they grow, they, they remain that way. They are dark. Um, I did learn, well, I read. I didn't learn yet, so I can't tell you. On each worm, the, the band, the clitotellum, each variety of worm has the band in a different segment of their body. So each of the little horizontal lines on the worm is considered a segment. And on some worms, the band falls in between the fifth and eighth segment. On others, it falls in between the 10th and 13th segment or whatever it is. Um, those aren't the exact numbers, but you can look that up. So again, you'll see it's kind of fat up there. It gets skinny, and then it gets fat again. Well, now it's crawling the other way. So um, now you see, I've got it on my leg. No, you're not going in my shorts. I don't want castings in my shorts. Um, this is, I would not call this a full-grown worm, but yeah, this is definitely not an adult either. So... But it's, it's fairly sizable. They get long and they're fat in a couple of spots. Let me continue to look. I started with only a pound. And again, they're only about six to eight weeks old here. Or not that the worms are that old, but that's how old, that's how long I've had them. Okay, here's... Here's a couple. Let's take a look at these. And you can kind of see the... Let's focus on this one here. Here, let me put this one back. Um, so you can see the color. They're very dark. It's, um, they almost look black at times. But they're always very dark. I, I love their color, actually. And I 
their segments, the, the, the horizontal ribs between their segments are very well defined. I could look up where in their body their clitotellum falls. You could see the band right there. And that's another thing. The, the band on them will be the same color as the rest of their body. Some worms, especially the invasive worms, um, the Alabama jumpers or snake worms, whatever you want to call them, their band is completely different than the rest of their body. It's a very light, creamy white color and um, very, very different. They're very easy to identify. I have actually this... The bucket right over there is full of them. Maybe I'll do a comparison. Um, but these guys, their band, their band stays as dark as their body. And they get very long. I still wouldn't, this one isn't full grown either. And you'll see a sticker right there. Gets a little thin, gets thick again. That seems to be universal. Let me put them down. I'm going to put them over there. Um... In the, in the naked side, so I don't pull out the same worm twice. Let's see. I did put a bunch of pumpkin, or not a bunch, just one big piece, in here yesterday. So I'm suspecting that they're under that. Here's another. You can see the holographic hue. That one, you can definitely see it. It's thick. He's skinny. And his tail there is a little thick again. Okay, go down there, bud. You go down there with your friends for now. I'm actually curious to see if they're going to be eating the pumpkin. Heck, it's raining out again. I thought I'd get outside and do gardening today, but nope, it's been raining every day. Here, come out. No, I don't want to pull you. I don't want to break you. I want just to see you. Come on, you're making your, your TV appearance here. All right, let me get my phone to focus. Okay, so... Now this one, the band, is swollen. Actually, this is the first time I've seen the band, that color. So I guess I can retract what I said about the band being the same color as the body. Um, this is my first time seeing it lighter, but also it's the first time I've seen it swollen. So this one must be ready for breeding. Clearly, it's the same type of worm. It's fat. It's skinny. And then it gets fat again. Um, i just been plopping them on my legs here. Um, but the band... Oh, jeez, I'm going to knock them on the floor. The band on this one, let me turn it over the right way, is... Well, I guess it's not that bright was the lighting. It is lighter. Somewhat lighter than the rest of its body. I'm trying to zoom in really good for you. But no, I guess it, it was just the lighting the way it was in there. It's, it is swollen. It is raised. Um, let's see. As it's curled up here on my leg, you can see how um, this section over in here, how deep it is. I don't know what color you would call that. Mauve or... No, that's not mauve. Eggplant. I don't know. Help me out here, folks. What color is that right there? Whatever color that is, that's an African nightcrawler. They are always very deep. I love their coloring, actually. Okay, let's see if... You can see, let me zoom out. You can see as they're crawling around in here when they stretch out. They're really long. Even the babies. I mean, look at that worm. 
Even the babies are long and skinny. They're kind of funny looking. They're funny looking adolescents. They got this long, lanky body right from birth. And they don't really coil up or curl up in my experience. Um, let's see. Come on, phone. So you can see skinny end, fat end. Now let's let it begin to move. It doesn't want to move. Come on, gotta move. People are wanting to see you. And again, the band on this one is dark. Let's try to get some of the cat. Oh, warm down. As it gets skinny and then it gets fat. Okay, there, there's the band. So it is dark. It is. Yeah, I don't know what that color is. It's almost like an eggplant color, but not really. All right, let's take this guy. Put him down. No, I'm not going to go through every worm. I just wanted to do enough to show um, what they look like in detail. And give a little bit about what I've experienced so far in their behavior. Now, what I read is that because they are tropical, these are African night crawlers, that they will die in temperatures below 60 degrees. I have red wigglers that stay outside all winter. I'm in Connecticut, zone 5B. It gets sub-zero plenty of times, snow and ice all winter and the worms do perfectly fine these guys here um i've read they will die at temps over 60 i haven't experienced that um i'm sorry under 60 i haven't experienced that but i'm not going to i'm not going to experiment to find out and the other thing i read is that if there is a big change in barometric pressure, such as a thunderstorm coming on, they will go into a mass flight mode, mass escape mode. Um, I don't know if that is more prevalent to those who keep their worms outside versus inside, but what I read is that it's part of evolution. Um, in Africa, when you know the, the barometric pressure changes and a big storm is coming, these guys get flooded out, especially because they live so deep. So they head to higher ground, so they go up immediately. And when you have an uncovered bin, up means out. Now, I did have them covered. I had a snap-on lid with holes on it, and they were very unhappy. They were all over the top and the sides, and they hated it. And once I took the cover off, and I, they were fine, I added just a layer of bubble wrap, and they've been doing really well since then. I just want to get to the pumpkin. Um, they've been doing really well with just bubble wrap. I have not found a single dried up worm since then. Okay, so this, this pumpkin, I just put this in here yesterday. So, um, late yesterday actually. But... It appears that worms have found their way to it. It was not pre-frozen. It wasn't decayed. It's pretty much fresh pumpkin. But I know these guys can, can and will manage it. You can see, you can see it here. It's, it's solid. And I just put it um, skin side down. Let me grab another. I'll do one more worm here. Or whatever is going to come up here. And you'll see. Oh, sorry, guy. Okay, let's see. Let me turn over. Again, you'll see that holographic look.
and you're gonna see they're fat and they get skinny and then usually yep, they get a little bit fat again so they're unique they're definitely unique the supplier I got them from actually brought them in from Africa I'm not sure how that happened or I'm not sure if I want to know how that happened I don't know if it was done legally or illegally um, but they're see fat fat skinny um, so these are absolutely you know 100% African African night crawlers They've been very well behaved. They, like I said, they haven't used, they haven't even traveled into the other side of the bin except those that I put over there while doing this video. They haven't escaped. The day I got them, they went crazy. Uh, it also was the biggest storm we had all year. It was thundering and lightning for three days straight. So if it's true that they're sensitive to barometric pressure, they got delivered on the worst possible day of days um, or it could have just been that you know they are sensitive to new environments more so than other worms and you know they they weren't happy but now since the day I got them and says that first night I have not had a single escapee I'm gonna put another one here on my leg and hopefully my camera will allow me to film it just up close. Okay, is that a baby worm on it? What is that right there? It might, might be. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with him while he's crawling on my leg because he's crawling on my leg. No, I think it's a part of a plant. There's too many things on there. So you can see just from, um, I'm going to try to uncurl his tail here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just from, let me zoom back out. You don't need to see my old wrinkled crepe paper skin here, although I don't mind if you do. Life happens. Um, you can see how long they are. And this, this is not a very old worm. But they are long, and they are thin, and they are dark. And they always have a fat spot. Me too, it's my stomach, but I it's not because of genetics. It's because I eat too much junk. So there you go, folks. This was way longer than I planned, as are all my videos. But I hope it gives you a good view of what African night crawlers look like. I'd be very interested in hearing from any of you who have African night crawlers, have any experience, if you've experienced or heard that they can change in color and size and behavior based on the bin they are in. Um, I'm just trying, I'm trying to understand that a little better. <laughs> this guy, see, they, they stretched. They really stretch. When they're when they're on the move, they can really let me see this was one if I had my hand out. You see, they they're very big. Okay, that's all. I'm gonna pause this video and just do a really short I promise this one will be really short. Just showing you the um actually I'm not even gonna pause the video. I wanna show you the invasive worms or the Alabama jumpers. The reason these are here is that I got them in my garden. They are invasive in this area and I have garter snakes. I have three pet garter snakes which love them and it's one way to deal with them. Now these guys are very fast. They're, they're very snake-like. You're going to see the band is milky white. Um, this is a very small one here. 
And the band on these is milky white all the way around. It is the same thickness, width, and color all the way around. Let me see if I can find a bigger one. That's a really, that was a really small one. That's a baby for sure. So I said, well, I don't, I mean, it's not their fault. Yeah, this is also a small one, but I just want to show you how how crazy they they are. They're not they're not worm like at all. They're very much they whip. There's that milky white band. They whip around. They thrash about, and if they need to, they will snap themselves in half because there's a point in their body where if they snap, they regenerate both pieces. Okay, here's a, here's a good example. I can get it to stay still. See, it's very snake-like. Very snake-like. You see the band? It is milky white, and it'll be that way on all sides. And I'm going to put this... Oh, sorry, dog. I just scared my dog. I'm going to put this on the floor here for a minute. Now, it looks darker. It looks dark here because of the lighting. It isn't. They're actually, um, they're kind of a grayish pale color, except for the band. Okay, the dog has to be checking it out. What? Did you find that interesting? Let me, move, let me put him over here in the light. See that band? It's a uh, terrible lighting. I gotta do something. But it's a... They're very frantic, and actually, it's it's kind of interesting because when I first when I first find them in the garden and pick them up, they thrash, and the majority of them snap themselves almost immediately. They've gotten used to handling. Um, it's almost like they become domesticated. Who's that, Gizmo? Huh? What's that? They heard me say snakes. They love when I feed the snakes. These two dogs get so excited. And there's no snakes in there. Ah, oh, P.D. No snakes in there, huh? Where's the snakes? Show people where the snake. Where's the snakes? Go show me. Show me. Where's the snakes? You, you know where they are. Let me see if I can find one bigger. Or one other. Okay, here's another. This little guy's not being very active at all. Maybe that's the same one I just put down. Uh, possibly it is. Maybe I need to tattoo my worms to identify them. Just kidding. Now somebody out there is going to come up with a worm tattoo machine. Okay, so this is not a huge one either, but you'll see how the, the kind of back and forth movement. I'll put it down. You see, it's they're very quick and... They do the back and forth wiggling that looks very much like a snake. Some people confuse them with snakes at first sight. Um, there's the, the band, the clitotellum. It's milky white. I'm going to get the phone to focus, so don't worry. It's milky white and very even in its width. Like all the way around the worm, it'll be whether it's a quarter inch on one side, it'll be a quarter inch on the other side. And it's always going to be much lighter than the rest of the worm. One more. One more. I'll find you one more. Okay, oh, here's one. Sorry, you ripped out of my hand. You see, he's very thrashy. That's the bottom. And they're definitely reproducing in here because I didn't have any that were this small. I haven't seen the cocoons yet. Oh, that one got away. I haven't seen the cocoons yet. I don't pay much attention to these guys. I throw in some leaves and they do their thing. But I'll tell you, 
they make castings that are really big. I guess big worms equal big worm poop holes. But this is what their castings look like. You can see. There are a um, few earthworms in here too. Yeah, let's see if this guy wants to be on video. When you first touch them, they just get all kinds of crazy. And they do that back and forth wiggle. So that's what they look like. They're very unique. They're very unique in their movement and their appearance um, and in the castings that they make. They're bad for the environment because they are depleting topsoil at a rapid, rapid pace. And there are, there are forests where trees are, are literally falling over. You can do the research. They're falling over because they're eating the soil and all the leaves and humus and everything around the tree roots so deep to the point where just the slightest of storm and the trees are falling over. Um, you know, some people are buying them, some people are selling them. I wouldn't to, to raise for compost worms or fishing worms. Honestly, they make terrible fishing worms. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned, they are designed to snap and break, and then both halves make a brand new worm. So as soon as you put them on a hook, they snap themselves. And that's not good, because now you got half a worm, and they they move so much that they don't stay on the hook. Um, I don't know how well they do in water. I don't know if they can crawl up on the bank and then reproduce. I guess that's a possibility. But so that's that's the invasive worms there's a million names for it and this is what their castings look like this, this is not finished castings this is these aren't here to to produce castings these are here because i caught them outside and they're a great food for my garter snakes so i'm eliminating them from reproducing outside while having a, a preferred source of food for my snakes so all right that's it everybody um, again it's now Connecticut worms and gardens and everything else will remain the same hope your worms are happy hope you are healthy and happy and I will see you again soon bye bye